Hi guys, so welcome to part four of the six part tutorial series I'm doing on making a character from scratch in Blender and eventually animating it. If you haven't already seen the first three parts where we do the modeling, the rigging and the white painting, go ahead and watch those. But this is part four, we're gonna be doing the materials and um, I will be eventually uploading the files to Patreon when this series is done uploading. And I'll also add some bonus content relating to this where I'm gonna show you how to do some of the simulation and stuff. So um, let's get straight into it and I hope you guys enjoy. Okay, so in this part, which is part four, we can do some of our materials. But before we do materials, we obviously need to set up our renderer and get some lights in here. And that's very easy to do. So number one, we're gonna go over to our render settings over here. And um, I'm gonna set mine to cycles. If you feel like you have a slower computer, maybe just work in Eevee. Um, if you're not an absolute beginner, then you should be fine with this. But for, for me, I'm gonna go with cycles. And the device, if you have a GPU, obviously use it. If you don't, just stick to CPU. It's fine, it's just gonna take a little bit longer. And we won't get into any of the fine details here of the sampling for now. In fact, just out of good practice, I'll probably go to the render, just set the sample amount down to 120, just in case we try to render it and doesn't you know, do 4,000 samples, which is ridiculous. And uh, just minimize that. So now we have our renderer set up and let's just go shift A and we're in our object mode and let's just go and add in our light and we're gonna add in an area light. And we're gonna go G, Z and move it above our character. Now remember in the previous part, we organized our scene. So we added a, a rig collection. So we can just untick it or hide it. And now you can see it's out of the way. So that's a good way to work nice and clean. And while we're in, a, in that habit, let's just select that light and press M on our keyboard, go new collection and let's just call it um, light and stage. Okay, we're gonna go okay. And uh, now, you know, we have a layer we can tick off. So now what we have to do is take this light and we can come to our light settings and we can control the strength. Like I'm gonna make the power 125. I'm gonna go to my size and make it free. Now, keep in mind, I'm assuming you guys are working at the same scale here that I've been working, adding in all of these objects you very likely are. If you have a larger scene, it's gonna um, require a bigger light with more power because Blender works with real, um, kind of real physics. So because of the inverse square law just keep that in mind. The bigger the scene, the more power you're gonna have to give it. So if you now go Z and you go rendered, so Z and then rendered, you should be able to see what this looks like. So while we're in that rendered view, let's just go G to move that light, R to rotate it. And um, I'm gonna move mine a little bit more forward and then rotate it in. And I think it, for me, a lot more strength is required. So I'm gonna bump it up to 300, um, maybe even 500. Okay, and remember the size will also make it more um, softer, the bigger you make that size. But I'm gonna go with something like 3.5 meters. And then I'm gonna go Shift D to duplicate this, bring it over to the side and rotate it in. Just so I have this kind of two point lighting system for now. I'm gonna go to my world settings. I'm gonna go to the color and click on this little tab and go to sky texture. And I set that strength way down to 0.2. And I'm gonna go to my render settings real quick. This is optional, but I prefer it. I'm gonna go to the film. And under the film, I'm just gonna tick transparent. So all we see is our character and not the environment. So there you go. Now we have a lit up character and we can get into our materials. In fact, let's just quickly go into our solid and select our camera. If you don't have a camera, for example, just go shift A, add in a camera and uh, you you know place it wherever you want. This is not a camera tutorial right now. This is just a part where we do the texture. So add in a camera, add it to any perspective or focal length that you want. That's not the point. Um, the point here now is we have a setup and we can do our textures. So now that we have all of our render settings and our lighting set up, let's go over to our shading workspace up here. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to our camera view by pressing zero, we're gonna hit Z and then go rendered. Okay, so now we're in our rendered space here. Let's select the mouth or the lips, I should say. So the lips here, and we're gonna go new, and let's just call it lips. And um, what we're gonna do is we're gonna come here and make the material a bit of a reddish pink almost, like this and not too saturated. Maybe a little bit more into the pink. Then we're gonna select the inner part of the mouth. We're gonna go new, let's call this uh, mouth. And uh, let's just make that a little bit more towards the red side of things, a little bit more reddish pink. And uh, that's looking quite good. We're now gonna select the chocolate and um, to help us a little bit here with the render performance, let's just go um, Z and let's go into the material preview instead. Okay, instead of the render, we're gonna go into material preview. So with that chocolate selector, let's click new and let's just call it chocolate. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna make the base color here brown, like that, okay? And what we're gonna do is we're gonna add some texture to it. So let's go Shift A over here and we're gonna go search and let's type in wave and let's get a wave texture. If we were to take this color and plug it into the height over here or the normal, you're gonna see it's not gonna do much for us here. So we actually need to convert it to black and white. So we're gonna go Shift A, search, and let's just type in color, get a color ramp here, and um, that's just gonna give us a black and white value. So I'm gonna drop it on top of this cable here. And then on top of that, we're gonna move these two nodes up. 
We're gonna go Shift A, Search, and let's get a bump. And that bump is gonna convert it into the normals we need. So we're gonna click here on the bump, place it on this cable here. So you should have the color going into the height and the normal going into the normal here. And now what you can do is control the strength. So I'm gonna make it 0.4. Okay, so the one thing we need to do here, obviously um, I messed this up, just make sure you go to the color and actually take that output here of the color ramp color and plug it into the height, not the normal. Okay, so that's something I messed up. Okay, that's looking right now. So you can see now we have this wave texture going through here, but it's not getting distributed the way we want. So what we need to do is add some mapping to this. So we're gonna go Shift A search, type in here mapping. We get a mapping node and plug the vector into the vector of this wave texture. And then we're gonna go Shift A, search, and we're gonna get a texture space, and then type in coordinate and get a texture coordinate. Place it over here and then take the object output and put it into the top vector of this mapping. So now we at least have a way to control it in a little bit. Um, at the moment, it's all looking too straight, so we need to add some randomness to this. So let's start by going, first of all, to the scale. I'm gonna make it something like 0.5 just for now, and I'm gonna to go to the distortion. I'm gonna make that 24. And I'm gonna to go to the detail. I'm gonna make that, um, I'll leave the detail as it is, but I'm gonna to go to the detail roughness and only make it half. I'm gonna make it 0.5. And then the phase here we'll leave as it is. We'll leave all of these ones here as they are, the bands. Um, but what we're gonna do now is plug this into another texture and we're gonna go Shift A, search, and we're gonna get a noise. I'm gonna grab a noise texture and then plug this noise texture in here. So between the wave and the color ramp, that should be going into the vector like that and the color into the ramp here. And now we're gonna take this scale, we can leave it as is. And um, in fact, let's just leave all these as they are. We're now gonna have this kind of like chocolate texture here. You can mess around with the detail here and the distortion and things like that. But overall, I feel like this works pretty well for this kind of chocolate effect. You can now also come here to your color ramp and you can control the, um, the gradient here to see how much you get through to that. You can also go Z and then just go rendered if you wanna see it a little bit better as well. But that just kind of creates this cool swirly chocolate effect. The only thing you really need to do now is go over to your roughness and just kind of decrease it. And um, you could make a lot more realistic things with a chocolate, but um, this is enough to get you started. In fact, I'm just gonna go to the subsurf scatter and make it 0 0.05, just get a little bit of subsurface scattering through there. And I'm gonna take the subsurface color and just make it kind of like a light blush caramel. So now it really looks like chocolate, though that has added some render, um, a bit more performance requirements from the GPU, but it does, does definitely add an extra level of realism to this. So that's the chocolate and the lips here. What we're gonna do next is the tray. So let's just select a tray. Let's go new and let's just call it tray. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna go shift A, search, and we're gonna get a noise texture. We take this noise texture, plug the color into the base color of the principal shader. And let's go shift A, search, and get a color ramp node and plug it over here in between the noise texture and the principal. If we now go Z and we go rendered, we can see we have this noise, te noise texture, but let's just take that scale and drag it up. And let's just increase the contrast here and take that scale way up, something like that. Okay, that's a lot better. And we're now gonna go and move these two up. We're gonna now duplicate this. We're gonna go Shift D to duplicate this color ramp. Take the color output, plug it into here. And now we're gonna go Shift A, search, and we're gonna get a bump node. I'm gonna place a bump node down here, take that color, plug it into the height of the bump, and then take that normal and put it in here. And that's how we can get our bump. What we can do now is we can go over to this color ramp and that's gonna become our color for the, the texture we're making here. So I'm gonna take the black value, drag it down a bit, less contrast. I'm gonna take the value up, and you can make this whatever you want, but I'm gonna kind of just make like a cool kind of wrapping paper. I'm gonna drag this value up and I'm gonna make that also kind of like a purplish pink. And um, it's up to you what you, how you wanna contrast these two colors, okay? Um, this is just kind of a way I made paper, but the bump on this needs to be really low. So if you come over here to the strength, you can really take that down quite a lot. So just a slight amount of bump here to make the paper. And you can go here to the scale, take that up to 300 if you want. And uh, that's a pretty simple way of making some kind of like a uh, frosted looking paper. And uh, you can even add a little bit of subsurface to that if you wanted to, or some maybe mix the principal shader with a transmission node. But um, for, for now, this looks pretty good. We're gonna leave it at that. So we're gonna also select the eyes. We're gonna go new, just call it eyes. And this is just simply a solid black color almost solid black, and we're just gonna bring that roughness way down. And you can also select the other eye, just come to the drop down here and just give it that same eye material. So you can already see, we're getting this coming together really well. Let's select the legs now, we're gonna go new. Let's just call it legs. And for this one, we're just gonna go and give it kind of like a brownish mocha kind of color. And you could leave the whole leg as th like that, but what I like to do is go over here to this 
color mater the materials tab properties i'm going to click plus while we have that leg selected create a new material for that leg and i'm going to call this shoe and what we're going to do is we're going to tab into edit mode for both of these i'm going to select the shoes so select any parts of the shoes go control l and that's just going to select all of that loose material that we just selected and then assign that shoe material tab out and now going to render it again and now we've got this new shoe material here and we can make that uh, whatever we want go ahead and get some textures online like some lever textures and apply it so it's really simple um, there's a lot of tutorials on there on materials you're not going to have any issue finding them but just something simple like this even without getting textures online uh, works really well so there we have it so far what i'm going to do is select the leg i'm just going to go to the modifiers and quickly give it a subdiv surface modifier and i'm going to put that underneath the armature it's very important so now that we have that in place um, let's just quickly give this a test render. Once again, just going back to the render, making sure the samples are set to 120 under the render. We're going to go render and render image. And let's just quickly see what the results are. And there we have it. That just took a few seconds on my computer. Might be different results for you depending on what you're using. But more or less, it's not that processor intensive. It's a pretty simple character. And we've kept things pretty simple as far as textures go. Okay, so this is pretty much the character done. Let's get into... Um, okay, I might not set up the scene in this part. I'll probably, in the next part when we do the animation, I'll set up a quick little scene. We'll set up the camera. But at least now we have our character's materials done. I will still have to do the floor material. But we're going to be doing the floor material in the animation part. And the reason we're going to do that, and I know it seems kind of strange, is because we want it to be tileable along with the animation. And that'll make sense when you, um, you see the next part. But thank you for watching. Keep in mind, these things are all on Patreon. You can check that out in the description below. And um, I am going to be adding some bonus content on Patreon as well relating to this character. Thank you for watching.